top five distractions preparing for a job interview. So the purpose of this video is to make you aware that um, you know your time investment uh, is uh, something that you should carefully consider for a job interview because uh, let's let's uh, be honest here you will not have unlimited time to to prepare for job interview because you might also have other uh, competing priorities including other interviews maybe so the first one I want to touch upon here is uh, looking up your uh, recruiter or your interviewer online uh, I found you know that uh, the more you look someone online the more you research about them the more biased you'll become about that person so from my experience um, it is a good idea to look them online for five minutes or hey let's say 10 or maybe even 15 minutes if that uh, interviewer someone is your hiring manager and they publish some interesting article online that's fine to to research to, to read their articles to see you know how they think and uh, and whatnot but uh, to look them up you know for uh, social media posts in general I believe it's a uh, it's not the best investment of your time because your overall impression will be too biased for the for for, uh, for the purpose of the interview and another thing you want to keep in mind is that many companies uh, actually manage uh, the online presence of their employees so if you see some corporate rhetoric on their LinkedIn profile that's most likely coming from the employer not from themselves so again it uh, uh, it's, it's not in your uh, interest to do this uh, for extended periods of time the second one i want to touch upon here is uh, looking up for other candidates experiences in their job interviews um, and uh, you, you see so here you know that the, the scenario is quite classic you go on glassdoor and uh, you you're saying hey i'm only going to look up for a couple of uh, commonly asked questions for uh, for the job interview and then you end up uh, reading how awful that experience was with the with that given employer and uh, it is you know drama sells quite well um, with these things so if you want you know an, a, a better approach maybe I have a list with the most commonly asked questions in these job interviews in fact, in fact I have plenty of these and also uh, many of them are not company specific at all so if you want you could also use these lists you know because it's straightforward you have the list then you have your questions then you, you can answer or hopefully don't take it from there um, so uh, these you know going on the internet and consuming content instead of you producing content this is a real danger that you want to be careful with so the time uh, to, to quote from someone I have an interesting quote that I uh, often use on this channel is the journey inside is a lot broader than the journey outside so in other words you should prepare yourself inside the inside preparation uh, the self-evaluation is the best evaluation always so uh, internet uh, and uh, mobile phones for that matter are not your best friends preparing for a job interview to the extent you know that if they, they there will always be this tendency to uh, to exaggerate with them so they are addiction machines after all so they're designed for this purpose especially the mobile phone uh, next one on the list um, another um, distraction preparing uh, for a job interview is actually preparing what you're already good at for that uh, job interview so for example if you're a type of person who is comfortable speaking then probably you'll allocate too much time uh, role-playing those uh, those questions or the, that that scenario that role-playing for that specific job interview whereas your best bang for the buck is to brainstorm for the best possible stories for the best possible uh, content in that stories you know such as metrics or um, you know properly structuring them so they make the most sense right so um, here my advice is to basically self-assess and this might take you a while might take hours might take days might take trial and error might take role playing with someone uh, might take taking references online from uh, from other people you know what what do you think it's, it's good, what works for you but the idea is that you must understand what you're not good at and to get out of that comfort zone and prepare uh, do what you can if you want was a slogan for I think uh, a, a major uh, mobile phones brand 
um, so prepare preparing what you're good at what you're already good at is another distraction you want to avoid preparing for a job interview number four here uh, redoing your CV so um, redoing your CV is something I learned to time that it's something that many people uh, do uh, going into especially on on-site interviews so the, the idea is that you pass the phone screening rounds and then for the on-site you say hey my CV is, is not that great and I must redo it and then you spend one or two days on the CV which is perfectly plausible you know I mean you could spend endless amounts of time on your CV now I want you to consider uh, the following aspects two aspects here first of all it's that CV who helped you get an interview in the first place and second of all uh, unless you have uh, you know, months to prepare for an intense on-site interview. Um, I would say, take your time to 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 think what's on priority for you. So, should, are you sure that everything is uh, the prep process is working smoothly for your job interview? Do you do you afford this luxury of uh, of doing your CV? And by the way, when you're redoing your CV. There is this added stress because the first version was actually a good one, a winner. And now you're redoing it, so you must ensure it's, 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 it will be considerably better than the other one. So if you, uh, some people prefer to scrap the first version completely and then redo it entirely. So if you choose this path, it will also take a couple of days to have a considerably better version for this. Uh, so in my opinion, uh, this is a distraction. And it's uh, it's not the first, it's it's not very uncommon that I hear people redoing their CVs for for that interview. So if you make some uh, small changes to that CV, some small adjustments, you found some spelling mistakes. No problem with that. I mean, I know that it's uh, some of you, you uh, prefer to to have copies ready for uh, for your interviews. I mean, when the interviews were face to face but now it no longer made that much that much sense but anyway so you many of you prefer to have an updated version of that CV which is fine to the extent that it takes you half an hour one hour at most to uh, to arrive to that uh, to that version and uh, if you choose this choose this at the beginning of your process so when you know you you're going to have 3 weeks or 1 month to uh, until until the on-site interview so do it in the beginning not Two days before the interview, two days before the interview is too late, in my opinion. And this is the same type of advice applies if they ask you to do some writing sample. Do it in the beginning of your of the process and don't wait until the three days before the interview when they say is the deadline for submission. Send it, you know, when you when you have it, send when you when you feel it's good, send it and you move on to the preparation process to do what really what actually matters for your job interview. And uh, number five, last but not least, uh, it's about uh, dress code or during these times you know when it's a remote ver it's a virtual uh, interview uh, you know the, the background the setup and all else um, for the dress code you know what uh, an advice a very simple advice that works is you you must be slightly overdressed in most cases unless you are really good at what you're doing and you want to make an artistic impression to send a strong message in the other direction that's very isolated and the people that do this already know this very well but usually slightly overdressed is what's recommended for a job interview when it comes to the background um, so long as you don't have a mess in the background that you're fine uh, for the setup of the video yes it's a good idea to check that a uh, couple of days i don't know two or three days before the interview to ensure that uh, the the video the, the image quality is good but more importantly the sound should work right so so long as you hear each other very well uh, the sound quality trumps uh, the video quality for uh, for an interview because after all it's what you say what matters the most everything else you know the picture only complements uh, that so these would be you know my top five distractions going into a job interview hopefully you found this uh, useful and thank you very much for watching.